Today we are going to discuss standing wave efficiency, also known as SWE. Standing wave efficiency is a term that I coined years ago to describe how much energy is conserved or lost in a musical instrument uh, that produces a standing wave. And in order to really understand this, we have to understand what a standing wave would be. A standing wave is different than the wave of my voice. My voice is producing a sound wave that's traveling in the direction of the camera and then it bounces around the room. It's not a standing wave because it doesn't reflect and return. So a standing wave is a little bit like uh, electricity, like alternating current. It's literally just bouncing back and forth from both ends. So a standing wave in a musical instrument, as in this one, would start in the back of my mouth and then it would travel to a couple inches outside the bell and when it hits the static pressure of the room, it's going to reflect and bounce back through the instrument. And when we produce a specific pitch, say A442 or something like that, then we are really having 442 cycles of that pitch uh, reflecting back and forth between those two nodes. So standing wave efficiency is the efficiency of that wave. Now you might think, how could it be inefficient? Well. When you're playing an instrument and you're on the fundamental, then there's one large sine wave inside the instrument, meaning there's a node inside my mouth and there's a node out here, and the anti-node is somewhere in the center of the instrument. And you can think of that as two kids skipping rope. If each kid is holding one end of the rope, those are the nodes. And as you form this sine-looking wave, then the center of it that's rotating has all of the energy. That's the anti-node. Inside a musical instrument, that one sine wave would be the fundamental note. It would be the lowest note you can play on the instrument. And on a trumpet, say the C trumpet, that would be pedal C. If you play C in the staff, you're now playing the first partial, which is the, the next step up. In other words, now you have two of those sine waves. And two kids jumping rope again could rotate the rope and set it up into two waves, and you've probably seen that done before, or they might get three or even four, depending on the frequency that they rotate. And you, that happens inside your instrument. Every time the anti-node, the high point in the wave, is constrained by tubing, then that high pressure zone exerts energy on the instrument. So if that happens here in the bell, say on the fifth or sixth partial, then Wherever that anti-node is, it's going to put pressure on the tubing wall itself and it'll set it into motion. So we have a transfer of energy from a sound wave into vibration of the tubing. We've transferred the energy from what you hear as sound into vibration. And I can measure that and I can determine how much energy is lost on each partial. My goal as a trumpet designer and maker is to prevent energy loss in specific places and allow it in others so that we can create warmth and vibrancy and color that is determined by the, the player or the client's needs. And uh, I can adjust all those things just through the efficiency and the design of the tapers of the instrument. Standing wave efficiency really is all about preventing the tubing wall from vibrating in the correct places. And that is the basis for all of my work uh, that began as Harrelson Trumpets.